This March Madness Picks Part 2 and Final Brackets edition of the Sports Gambling Podcast is presented by WinBet. WinBet is now offering a Bet the Underdog special. Bettors will receive a $25 free bet for every $50 winning wager and dogs greater than plus 300. Download the WinBet app now or visit WYNNBet.com and start winning today. We're also brought to you by Stable Duel. Stable Duel is a horse racing DFS app where you can play free and paid games for real cash prizes. You can win as much as $25,000 with one entry. Head over to StableDuel.com to get started today. We're also brought to you by PropSwap, America's marketplace to buy and sell sports bets. Use promo code SGP on your first deposit to receive up to $500 in bonus cash. Head over to PropSwap.com or download the PropSwap app today. And of course, don't forget to download the SGPN app for your chance to win $3,000 in the DGen dance. Welcome everyone to the sports gambling podcast. I'm Sean second, the money green with my partner picks, Ryan, real money Kramer. What's happening? Kramer? Dog? Sean, we're in Vegas, yes. but we have stuff to get to. So let's do it. So much stuff to get to. We are going to be joined by a couple great guests. Then we're going to give out all our against the spread picks for Friday and our final bracket predictions. Joining us uh, to talk uh, college basketball as always Colby Dan, AKA the Dan to base. What's up Colby? This is March. This is March. And uh, what a perfect way to introduce our first guest here. He is a college basketball analyst for ESPN, Jay Billis. Uh, Jay, thanks for joining us on the line, man. Appreciate it. Gentlemen, thanks for having me. Great to be with you. Yeah. And uh, of course, I saw, I saw your recent post. You had Texas Tech upsetting your Duke Blue Devils in the tourney. As a former Duke player, do you catch any sort of grief when you pick against the Blue Devils? Only if I'm wrong. Uh, <laughs> I, I think I think all the people that uh, you know that I know uh, understand. Like that our bosses make us make these picks. If if I knew who was going to win, I'd be with you guys in Vegas <laughs> yeah, by the pool exactly. with a drink in my hand, a pile of money. No, you know we don't know who's going to win, but it's become part of the job. Well, and, and uh, it's an amazing reverse jinx, by the way, yes, I, I appreciate exactly. the, I appreciate the savvy of it. And, and you, you know, being a former Duke blue devil, you just gave coach case some bulletin board material when they, if they end up playing Texas tech, you can just, you know, hang out the screenshot of you doubting the, uh, the Dukies there and maybe get them a little fired up there. Um, now I also heard you talking about just the tournament in general. Is this one of the more wide open tournaments in recent memory? Well, that's a great question. It depends on what you mean by wide open. Like, I, I think when people say anybody can win, that's true of a given game. But I don't think it's true uh, of the national championship. So, uh, as you guys know, you can have somebody fall down in your bracket and you can uh, have a great run yourself and get to a Final Four. There are a number of teams that do that. But winning a national championship, or you're looking at the top three seeds that have done it. I think it's 32 of the last 36 champions have been top three seeds. And uh, and it's nine out of the last 11 have come from the top three seed lines. So I think this year there's a pool of about eight teams that are prohibitive favorites to win the whole thing. But there's a reason we have to go back to, you know, NC State 83 or Villanova 85 to make these sort of prognostications about anybody can win. Because it's been a long time before we had an anybody that, that, that won it. Virginia Tech in 2022. <laughs> I mean, it, it's a... You know, you must have listened to our betting commandments because you called out a perfect one, which is the, the list is really short. Winning six games is hard. And, and, I, and when you narrow that list down, it, it's really hard to sift out Gonzaga uh, as being the champ. So, I mean, I mean, I look at the analytics guys, too. They're calling out 25% chance for Gonzaga to take down the crown. So, I, I guess, Jay, like, is this finally the year? Is this the year we can put a, put a fork in it? I actually thought it was going to be last year, but uh, they got bullied in the championship game by a, a, an outstanding Baylor team. Those were the two best teams all year long. You know, this year Gonzaga hasn't been as bulletproof in the regular season. They're a different team. They don't. Uh, they're not as perimeter oriented as they were last year. So they've got instead of Corey Kispert now they got Chet Holmgren as seven footer is probably going to be the one pick in the draft. 
But, you know, Gonzaga has been in two of the last four championship games. As you guys know, they go to in the last probably six, seven years, they've gone to more elite eights and more sweet 16s than anybody. Uh, they're the team I trust the most. But one of the things to your last question about wide open, one of the things that's been most interesting to me this year is there's only a handful of teams that are ranked in the top 15 in both offensive and defensive efficiency. And I think for the layperson, when they're making their picks, you know, you, you need to look at that. If they're if they're good in both those metrics, they're going to do better in the tournament generally. Uh, but a team like Purdue, they're ranked number one in offense. They're outside the top 100 in defense. Like that's not championship stuff. And uh, so it's hard for me to put Purdue in the title game when uh, they've not defended at a high level. So I, I look at that and, and and those metrics, you know, Gonzaga and Arizona come out on top in that. They, the only question for Arizona is Kirk Creese going to be going to be healthy throughout the tournament. If he is, uh, that 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 makes them even more powerful. Yeah, and and I think Kramer had the stat is similar to what you have of like the top twenty team or you know the top teams that are top twenty offensive efficiency and defensive efficiency. Those are where your national champions usually come from. Uh, one team that's like right now at WinBet has them as like a thirty to one, a bit of a long shot, but certainly has the pedigree. And in my mind, they do fit the top twenty offensive and defensive efficiency, and I think they have a real shot to win it all. What is your take on uh, the UCLA Bruins this year? UCLA has not performed to what we expected as the number one team to start the season, but it's largely been due to injury. You know, I, I saw them when they beat Villanova in overtime at Poly Pavilion. I thought, man, this team is about to take off, and they didn't do it. But they're built, I believe, for tournament play. They can play uh, in, a, in an up-tempo game, and they can play in a, a slowdown game, and they can play in a slugfest. One of the things that I think sets them apart is Johnny Juzang can make shots. I mean, last year he was the hero of the tournament for UCLA. But Jaime Hawkes Jr. has played his best over the last five, six games. And I think they're on a good vibe going in. They're better than a four. And their draw is pretty good. Uh, so I wouldn't be surprised to see them reach the final four out of that bracket. I think they're they're in there. I don't have a bracket in front of me, but I think they're in there um, in, in a good spot. And uh, I, I still think Baylor's the most uh, vulnerable number one because yeah. of the injuries. They're number one because of their body of work, but they don't have all the bodies that created that body of work. And if LJ Cryer doesn't come back at near 100%, I just don't see them, them winning the whole thing. Do you think that the analytics, I know you mentioned the top 20 thing on offense and defense. Now, I wonder if you see teams like Memphis that just seem like they were terrible early in the year and they've came out of nowhere recently who I think can give Gonzaga a matchup based on their athletic ability. Do you think in today's college basketball that's changing so much, the transfer portal, players that haven't played together you know, with each other for two, three years, do you think that the analytics, the analytics can kind of be an outlier? Like you go back to that Texas Tech team, what was in 2019, they had a bunch of transfers. They were outside of the top 20, and they almost won the national championship. Yeah, I mean, that's it's always possible for that stuff to happen, but um, I, I'm not saying those analytics are, are dispositive of the issue, but they're a great indicator. Uh, look, I, I, I agree with you on Memphis that they're super talented, but they're young in key positions, uh, and, and I, I don't see them beating Gonzaga. Gonzaga would have to play really poorly, and Memphis would have to play great. I think there's that much of a spread between those two teams. Uh, is it possible? It's always possible for an eight or a nine to beat the one in that second round game. But I think Gonzaga is too consistent. They're too good of a passing team. I think they cause too many problems for that to happen. They, they're they not a team that gets upset very often. They, they can get beat in a Sweet 16 or a, uh, a regional final, but I don't see them going down the second round. Um, uh, maybe maybe 15 years ago, but not now. Now, you mentioned Baylor as, as a possible vulnerable one seed. You know, I not to get knocked out by Norfolk state, but maybe not to get to the no. final four. Uh, what about any of the two seeds, Auburn, Kentucky, Villanova? We've already talked a little bit on Duke. Any of those two seeds jump out at you as uh, particularly vulnerable? Not vulnerable. I think Kentucky is the best of the two seeds. I thought they should, they, they very well could have been a one. If not for that loss to Tennessee in the sec tournament, I think they would have been a one. Um, you know, Villanova is intriguing because they're not big. They don't have a lot of size. So if they get against a really big team, that's going to be a little bit of an issue for them. But because they can play small and uh, and they space the floor so well and they play off of two feet and pivot and, you know, their guards will back you down. The one thing about Villanova that you always should keep in the back of your mind, I mean, you guys know this, but your listeners, 
is they shoot 82% from the oh, free yeah. throw line as a team. If you had an 82% free throw shooter, one guy, you'd be happy with it. Their whole team shoots 82%. So when, and they play in a lot of close games. In a tournament play, when you can knock free throws down, uh, that, that, that's a good bet to me. Yeah, that's huge. And we, we talk about it all the time when we're breaking down these spreads because uh, a lot of these games come right down to the wire, especially with the number. And if you got someone hitting 82% at the line, uh, that that's means, how you cover a spread. Yeah, period. Exactly. <laughs> now, puts now, you in a much better spot. Now, Jay, what about Cinderella's? We see this, I feel like, every year. Loyola, Chicago, you know, VCU, these teams that come out of nowhere make it to the Final Four. Do you have any that you've circled that could make a deep run? Well, I mean, it, Loyola, Chicago is one of them. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I, I like their, their team, opening game. I think they can beat Ohio State. Uh, Ohio State's got one tough matchup for them that they're not going to be able to, to solve, and that's E.J. Liddell. But nobody can solve E.J. Liddell. He's one of the best players in the country. The thing I like about um, Loyola Chicago is, one, they've been there before. So they got a number of players on their team that played last year and beat uh, Illinois in the second round and a number of guys that have won before. So they get it. You know, I played for Porter Moser, and now they're playing for Drew Valentine. Um, and and they take teams out of transition. They're giving up. They're, I mean, this is a – I still have a hard time saying it because it's almost like I don't believe it, but they give up 5.8 points per game in transition. I mean, that's ridiculous. That's insane. So talk about a team that doesn't beat themselves. Do I see them as final four good? No, but honestly, I didn't, I didn't think that the Loyola team with sister Jean and all that was good enough to make the final four in the year that they did it. Um, but, but they're good enough to win that first round game. And, you know, some of the ways that I look at upsets, I mean, you guys are talking about, you know, real money here, but I'm t I usually talk to people that are trying to win their office pool <laughs> and you tell them, look, if you want to pick some of these upsets, just make sure that you think that the next game, either team was going to lose so that you don't blow your bracket up by yourself. You know, let, let, let one of the, pip, uh, the teams that you really believe in, if they slip on a banana peel, there's nothing you can do about that. But if you're, if you're out there trying to be Nostradamus on all these upsets, you, you, can, you can bust your own bracket that way. Oh, yeah. You can get cooked uh, pretty quick. Now, uh, just getting to, like, overall sports news, we saw Tom Brady reconsider his retirement. Uh, Ryan and I have a conspiracy theory that maybe this isn't Coach K's last season. If you had to place a bet on whose retirement lasts longer, would you go with Tom Brady or Coach K? Uh, it'll be it'll – be, uh, Coach K is the last longer, you know, like, like it, I don't think it takes a genius to figure this out. So Brady retires and he spends <laughs> all his time at home and realizes how much work it is to be at home. You know, your <laughs> wife's asking to fix things. You got to, all of a sudden Giselle's kids. got a you massive honey do list. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You can't watch what you want on TV. All of a sudden the remote control doesn't belong to you anymore. And you decide, you know what, I'm going to go in the office for a little while. Uh, Coach K is king at home too. Uh, you know he, he's got a great relationship with his wife, uh, but but they don't have any kids in the house, and uh, and he claims th this is what drives me crazy. Like Coach K claims that he enjoys gardening, and uh, I can't see it. I don't believe that's true. If if he enjoys gardening, he enjoys out going out and telling the gardener what to do. And he was given. He was giving me a hard time the other day about playing golf. Like, Coach K doesn't play golf, and he says, you know, you golfers. And he says, you have somebody else carry your bag. He says, I don't want to do that. I want to be outside and do work outside. And then I go, well, why don't you come carry my bag? That'd be great. You carry my bag. That Coach way you can be outside and doing work. That sounds great. Let's do that. Coach K, the ultimate caddy. Uh, yeah, you don't picture him at, like, one of those knee pads and some, like, you know, gloves on and like trimming rose bushes. I, Big old I, hat. Yeah. He ain't but doing I, that. I, I do feel like he could mad dog a golf ball into the, into the hole. Though. <laughs> Yell at it enough to get it to yeah, roll I, in. Well, I, what would be bad? So if he caddies for me and I miss a putt, he starts screaming at me like he used to when I played for him. That would be a downer. But, but, <laughs> but having him schlep my bag would be fantastic. Yeah, the first time the caddy yells at the golfer. Uh, that's <laughs> a lot of fun. All right, well, Jay, I know you're also participating in the uh, American Century Championship, Lake Tahoe. I saw you got, what, 43rd place last year? What are you, what are you, are you trying to crack the top 20 this year? Do you have a goal? Yeah, I mean, my goal is to play better the next year than I did the last year. And I played, I played halfway decent last year. I, I held my own, at least. And I don't know if you guys have been to the American Century. I'm sure you've seen it on television if you haven't been, but it's it's so it's an amazing experience. It's it's it might be the the 
the coolest athletic experience I've ever had. One, because I get to be fanboy and hang around, you know, Aaron Rodgers and Justin Timberlake and Steph Curry and Joe Theismann, all these people. Oh, yeah. And they're exceedingly nice. Like, you can't get over how nice they are. And everybody's just enjoying competing. Um, and then uh, it, it, always the first tee shot, I'm, my goal is not to kill a spectator. Um, I don't want it to be a, the, the American Century Memorial Tournament the next year. But um, but the, the players interact with the fans. And uh, it's just, it's the coolest thing. It's honestly the coolest thing I've ever done. And Tahoe is amazing. Edgewood. The Edgewood Golf Course and the Edgewood Resort is off the charts good. Um, if if they ever decided not to invite me back, which I'm told is a gigantic discussion are, are every you, year, are you on the bubble, Jay, when it comes to the invite list? Oh, I think I think Lenardi has me. The uh, I, I'm in the NIT every year. Like I, I wait. It's like the Pope. I wait for the smoke to come out to see if I get invited back. But, I got the. But if I, got I don't get in. invited back. If I don't get invited back, I'm buying a boat and I'm going to park it off a of 17 and be one of the fans <laughs> Hell yeah. screaming at the players. We, we need like that, a, that, a, that's my next <laughs> that's my next bucket list is to be one of the fans on a boat. We need the American Century Championship <laughs> reaction show where it's just Jay, a camera in his living room. He got the call. All right, let's go. <laughs> All right, all right, Jay, that'd, well, be better, that'd be better than any any selection show thing, <laughs> like when I get the call. Yes, uh, and I haven't gotten it yet, so maybe you guys know something I don't. But I haven't gotten it yet. But well, but yeah, well, that, well, that's good. We're gonna be rooting I'm for you, Jay. Around, <laughs> I'm running around high five, and that's that's gonna be the <laughs> that's gonna be the thing. Awesome. Well, uh, Jay, appreciate your time. Appreciate you calling in. Uh, make sure you give uh, Jay Billis hey, a follow on Twitter at Jay Billis. Best announcer going in college basketball, Let's Jay. Go, I yes. mean that, man. Every time I, I hear you call a game, I'm like, this guy's great. I wish he would do more games, which I know you do a ton. You're drunk when you're listening. That, that, <laughs> come on. They say is... that to all the girls. <laughs> Jay he hates Jay a lot of announcers, Jay. No, so. Gus Johnson, Jay Billis, they make college <laughs> basketball go. Awesome. Well, thanks again, Jay. Have a, have a great tourney. Thank you, guys. <laughs> All right, take it easy. Oh, man, that was awesome. Getting to talk with Jay Billis. All right. And, uh, man, of course, we are in the WinBet Studios broadcasting live here. If you want to bet big, win bigger, you got to do it over at winbet.com. They got you covered uh, so much. I mean, th they got a ton of bonuses going now for the tourney. The Bet the Underdog special. $25 free bet for every $50 winning wager and dogs greater than plus 300. Kramer and I are on Richmond money line. So another 25 bucks on top of that. That is awesome. And again, patrons who wager at least 50 or sorry, 500 in the first and second round of the tournament will earn one entry into the drawing for a trip to the win Las Vegas. Oh man. And the uh, bet $10 get $200 in free credits. The deals just keep coming over at win bet.com uh, offer subject to change terms and conditions at winbet.com must be 21 or older and present in the state where play through is available. If you or someone you know has a gambling problem, call 1-800-522-4700. And uh, when I started the show, I said, very special show, a couple big guests to get things going. We just got off the, the line with Jay Billis and now joining us in person, the senior lead trader for WinBet, Matt Lindman. Matt, thanks for uh, coming on the show, man. What's going on, guys? I haven't been in here for a while. I feel like I'm on trial over here. <laughs> yes, it, it, it is set up like okay. I, I do feel almost like a prosecutor, like yeah, grilling yeah, you yeah. under deposition. Tell us, uh, Matt, who uh, and you know when what you, he did get. I mean, Jay Billis was his opener. So <laughs> yes, how did, I, oh, I was gonna say, how did I not get to go before him? But you know, I, that's fine. We that's we fine. understand it, priorities. I, I, like, I like how yeah. your your perspective. Yeah. <laughs> you know, when we have uh, people on from WinBet, uh, the biggest question a lot of times is. Who is your biggest liability? Because as gamblers, I like to picture the traders and the other in the back of the room, them sweating out my, you know, probably not going to break the bank over a win bet, but sweating out the opposite side. Who are you guys worried about this tournament? Well, so far, and this is a little bit of a result of the matchup and the number and a little bit a result of what we thought the number should be, but uh, we're going to need Vermont pretty badly, I think. Right now, that is our biggest liability. Um, really? And it was a very interesting situation. You usually don't see this going into the tournament on Selection Sunday when everything opens, but I had like a five or six point difference from what it opened. I think it opened like uh, plus eight uh, somewhere here in Vegas, and then offshore it was like five and a half, six. 
And I had the number, you know, closer to a pick them, honestly. Like, yeah, could probably argue somewhere in the two to three range. So we said, let's go ahead and let's take some money on Arkansas here, minus five, minus five and a half. And then we'll follow it down as it starts to move down. And, and we'll just try to make sure that we're, you know, protecting Vermont. So um, that's the one game that we're probably going to need because I'm thinking that when people come in on Wednesday night, Thursday morning, and they see a five seed that's only laying, you know, four, four and a half, five points, they're going to want to bet that. So I'm guessing that's going to be one of our biggest well, decisions. Th- and that's interesting. That's, that's probably pretty surprising on our end because I feel like uh, traditionally the 12 seed is everyone likes to take that as the uh, – you know, as the upset uh, play there, I'm surprised to see uh, that that that's the side you need there. Yeah, I think so. Isn't it a 413? It's a 413. Oh, yeah. 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 we, we have two 413s that are really interesting oh, because Providence. the uh, Providence, yeah, that's going to be another one that I don't know if Providence is going to be as popular as Arkansas just because they're not as much of a brand name and they've kind of been a surprise team. But um, that, that might be another one with a low number like that. I, I don't think we've seen a number that low for a 413 matchup ever. So No, it's, um, we, we touched on this. It's historic. The previous low was two and a half. Okay. And it, it seems like both Vermont and South Dakota State are getting a lot of buzz. So I'm kind of surprised to hear you say that you're going to need Vermont, especially because I, I thought coming in here that I was going to grab Arkansas. <laughs> like a, Apparently, I'm a total square. I'm going <laughs> to grab Arkansas and feel good about it because everyone's going to be on Vermont and I'll be on the contrarian side. But uh, nope. I'm, the game's in Buffalo, too. I, I yeah. know. We, we touched on this. Well, and, and you mentioned where the game takes place. How much do you guys factor that in? I imagine you already have an idea of like, hey, this is what a true home court is when they're actually playing in their home court. But what about situations where, uh, like Vermont in Buffalo, where it's not their home court, but certainly they would, you could imagine they would have more fans there. How much do you factor in potential home court, the fan split uh, for these games? I don't think it matters too much in an Arkansas-Vermont situation because you look at Musselman and he's using it as a, as a motivational tactic for his team. He's saying, the you know, they shipped us up into <laughs> play in, you know, basically Vermont's backyard. Yeah. Uh, so in that situation, I don't know. But if you have like a 7-10 or 6-11 matchup where the 11 seed has to fly out to California and play in front of, you know, 250 people in the first round, that's maybe a situation where I would take home court into effect a little more. But when it's, you know, a four seed that feels disrespected and they're going to feel even more disrespected because the number's only, you know, four and a half, five, like, I think that you could even argue that might be a a benefit for Arkansas. Like, they're going to come in focus. They know they're going to be up against a good team, a good, you know, a tough. Master motivator. I mean, he's a master motivator. A little chip on their shoulder. Yeah. What about the future market? Is there any team that you go, oh, man, if Gonzaga wins it all or Kansas? The Hokies? Or- You're terrified <laughs> of the Hokies, right? Gonzaga is a disaster. Really? Um, I didn't believe in Gonzaga from day one. I wasn't impressed. We went and saw him play Duke live. I said, this isn't the same team as last year, not even close um, against Alabama, a team that obviously has a really high ceiling, but, you know, it's been yeah. some really ugly efforts really low this year. Really low lows, too. Um, and they, I mean, they kind of whooped their butt. Like, it, I don't think that game was all that close. And then, um, you know, the St. Mary's game wasn't really all that competitive. I just am not impressed by the Zags. And I don't think you look at last year, you know, going undefeated, getting that close, and then getting dominated in the title game. Yep. How do they have the psyche? How do they have the mental makeup to think that they can win six straight again this year? I just... I do not see it for them. So I, but we, we put our money where our mouth is. We're in a lot of trouble at the Zags right at all. So. Well, it, you mentioned your personal opinion. As the senior lead trader, how much do you factor in your personal opinion there where you go, you know what, Let's, we're okay taking this Gonzaga money because Gonzaga, they're going to they're gonna choke. They're going to blow it. Or are you crunching the numbers and saying, like, well, maybe we should be a little more conservative. Like, how much is your personal opinion of these teams factored into the, the spreads and how much you're taking and when you adjust it? Well, yeah, you know, I'm not going to sit there and I'm not going to give away six to one on Gonzaga when everyone's at five to one, you know, and we lose, you know, mid five figures, six figures to them. But, you know, when you're when you're at a market number and they're betting it and everyone's at five to one and you're at five to one and you don't really have any opinion, you're just not too concerned. You don't mind those bets. Those are the kind of bets that you're going to win. You're going to beat over time. So, uh, you know, I kind of just let them keep betting Gonzaga. I just stayed at, you know, a typical market number all year. And, you know, the bets just piled in. And, And the interesting thing is we did the final four, too. And since Gonzaga was a chalk on that, nobody bet them. So we actually win a little bit back if they make the Final Four. But, uh, yeah, they're our worst, like, probably our worst liability. Yeah, so no teams get, that can win it all. So no Gonzaga tight, fans. That's Phyllis a, is high yeah. on them. That's a tight, <laughs> that, that's a tight middle. Like, yeah. you got. <laughs> but we got uh, two uh, Final Four liabilities that are, are a total disaster. One's not going to happen. That's Longwood. We lose, like, 500000 Wow. And then Mur- is that just one guy? 
yeah, like one fifty dollar bet at like ten thousand to one or something. And then uh, Murray State is a legitimate disaster, and that one I'm really nervous about. I mean, they they got a really bad draw. They yeah. got to go through like San Fran, Kentucky, and Purdue, but they, they got uh, a tough we lose out. a lot to Murray State. They bet that at like two hundred to one to make the Final Four. I think we're at like eight to one, ten to one, or something, right? Like I don't want anyone. Oh to bet wow! That anymore. Yeah, no you more know what I mean? Murray like State. no more yeah. racers. Yeah. <laughs> well, and so. I know, I know, uh, for the first round game, I think they they've been taking the majority of the action as well. Is that is that true for you guys against San Francisco, or is it kind of split? Yeah, I think that's going to be another game we're going to need big. I think. You look at, you know, a lot of people are just going to see that 30-2 and two record for Murray State. They're going to see a short number, pick them, and everyone's going to be talking about that potential Kentucky matchup in the second round. I think that that's mm. – I actually think that's a game we're going to need San Fran, and I don't mind needing San Fran. Um, you know, really well-coached team, West Coast team. I went and watched them play against Gonzaga, and, you know, they, they kind of you know, had the Zags nervous late. They made a little run at them. So I think that's a really good underrated team. I think that might be a good first-round play. Feeling sharper. Yeah, <laughs> feeling sharper down yeah, here. Kramer sitting was on. on. We picked uh, that game yesterday. Kramer was on San Francisco. Okay. Colby and I were uh, we're, we're Murray uh, right. Murray men. I said though, hard. I think that's the hardest right. game to to forecast out of the whole slate. Col yeah. Colby's picking both sides. <laughs> yeah. There we go. Yeah, All I know is I'm like 25% on 8-9 and 7-10 matchups life. I just can't figure them out. Oh, yeah. Save my life. So. It's your kryptonite. <laughs> yes. I think no. this year the 4-13 is, better than the, is, is more difficult than the 5-12. Traditionally, 5-12 yeah. is always, yeah. you know. Are, what are some of the 5-12s this year? Uh, UConn, New Mexico State, which is actually the one 5-12 that I could see as an upset. I like them too. Yeah. yeah. I like New uh, well, keep an eye on the Aggies. Uh, Houston, UAB. I know a lot of people seem to be liking the Blazers. Yeah. I, ha I, bet, I bet both of them, actually. <laughs> Yes. Okay. I, I, really, I got a lot of dogs in the first round, you know. I think, yeah. I like the subtle nugget there of him not know of you not knowing the seeds. Yeah, yes. that, that, that was matter. nice. Yeah, seeds what don't is, matter. Yeah, I, yeah. I mean, if, I think if you're it's not you know, worth looking at, you're trying to bet a 12 seed money line. That's not not the right way to go about it. Not at all. You know, and honestly, there's everything is so sharp and accurate right now. You really got to get creative and and how you want to approach it to find an edge because if you're just looking at the same stuff as everybody else it's, it's already baked into the number yeah but. it's you guys you guys are aware you guys have a ken palm premium subscription over oh, there yeah we got one or two of those yeah yeah <laughs> so we're not we're not beating the books with our uh, ten dollars a year uh, ken palm <laughs> what was the hardest line to set uh, of all these which one do you think was kind of the hardest for you guys um you know i think that that arkansas one really made me nervous you know i don't want to talk about that one too much but something that happens when you keep power ratings and you have these teams that dominate their conference like Gonzaga, Houston, Vermont, is their power rating gets inflated when they win by 30 every game. So you look at Vermont's conference tournament run, they won every game by like 25, 30 points, something yeah. like that. So their, their power rating, I got them in like my top 20 right now because of that. So I know that number's a little high. I know that Ar you know, Arkansas is probably a couple points better than them on a neutral court. So I'm nervous to see what the market thinks, where that ends up closing, because if it goes back to six, I'm going to look like an idiot going on the air talking about how that number should be two and a half, three on Sunday night. So, All right. Yeah, well, we got, we got to start making some picks ourselves. But before we let you go here, who do you, who do you personally like in the tournament? We've hit on a couple teams but, uh, and, and stuff you're worried about for win bet. But who personally do you think is going to surprise some people? You know, I surprise some people. I don't have – I've got an angle. I've got an angle for you. I don't know if I have a team. But one thing that I've kind of caught on to the last couple of years is if all other things are equal and you need to find someone, go back to the preseason rankings. Pick someone out of the preseason. Yeah. So you look at UCLA started like 20th or so, ended up having a terrible year, snuck into the tournament in the playing game. Got some injuries, a little sleepy, run. yeah. Yeah, and then 2019, Auburn had uh, really high preseason expectations, had a terrible regular season, then finished really strong, made the Final Four. So a team like Alabama, as bad as and inconsistent as they are, that's a team who at the beginning of the season was top 10 power rated. You know, if they get hot, if they find their groove at the right time, start shooting well, they could be really dangerous. So I think a team like an Alabama or another, just any top 25 team you, you can You can say it. The Texas Longhorns. Oh, that was the yeah, Texas that was the other Longhorns who, who are Kramer's squaring off against, against his Hokies. <laughs> Listen, Chris Beard knows how to win tournament games. How do I I'm do it? Like this? <laughs> down. Down. Wait, wait, who's your team? Oh, He's a Virginia, Virginia Tech, Tech guy. Yeah, okay. yeah. yeah, come at me, Big hey, 12. I, mean, I love Virginia Tech, but they're in the toughest spot possible coming off that oh, yeah. title. I mean, it's just, well, and we like fading teams coming off a Cinderella tournament Are you run not aware of NC State in 1983? <laughs> we've lost hey, him on this one, though. They got an incredible coach. Like, I don't, I don't yes. really doubt him. So, uh, what a great coaching matchup. You're talking about the basketball coach or the football coach? Oh. I, love, I love Coach Pride, too. No, no. All right. Well, I have to get you back talking uh, college football futures as well. Matt, appreciate the time, as always. Uh, make sure you give him a follow on Twitter at 
Lindy train, L I N D E train. And, and look, as a guy that locked up Arkansas yesterday, I, now I'm like, I mean, I, I want to root for him. I got <laughs> I, I, Hey, I think uh, hogs by three. Everybody okay. goes home happy. You know, <laughs> like, that's you fine. Go. Yeah. <laughs> there you go. All right. Well, no Matt, one gets hurt. Matt, appreciate the time. And obviously make sure you guys uh, go sign up over at win bet. Give him a follow on Twitter at, as well at win bet. Thanks a lot, Matt. Appreciate the time. All right. Thanks yeah. guys. Let it ride. All right. Now we're going to get to our against the spread picks. Before we get to that, I want to make sure we shout out PropSwap.com, where America goes to buy and sell real sports bets. Just go to PropSwap.com, use that promo code SGP, get an instant deposit match up to $500. Maybe you uh, maybe you end up sitting on one of those uh, Murray State futures. You get a little nervous. You want to hedge out. You want to take your win bet ticket over to PropSwap.com. You can do that. Use that promo code SGP, get that instant deposit match up to $500. What's happening, Colby? Tyrod Taylor signed with the Giants. I just got to mention that to talk a little trash oh, there, wow. right? Why are we talking trash? Brian, are you worried? Are you bummed instead of Mitch Trubisky, you end up with Tyrod Taylor? My, what do you mean? I already love this reclamation project that Joe Shane is taking on, bringing in Brian Dable and the smartest coaching staff in the NFL, already fixing the offensive line, and now they sign the greatest hokey that I ever I ever rooted for greater than Vic, right? Greater than wow. this guy. Oh, wow. Vic flashed like a star brighter, <laughs> but Tyrod, that dude is a dog. I love his signing. Let's talk about only, March Madness. He's only 56 or 57 years old. <laughs> he's not going to need to play. He, he does. He does look pretty old. All it's, right. It's all about the locker room. We are going to get to all of the Friday against the spread picks. Then we will uh, break down, give you our full walkthrough of our bracket with our uh, national championship predictions, make sure if you haven't already uh, download the SGPN app and make sure you enter the D gen dance. We're giving away $3,000. It's a March madness style picking contest. Uh, it starts Thursday, the games there, and it runs all the way to the championship. Your chance to win $3,000. You get 10,000 in credits that you can use However you want. I just saw XFL. Jim said he's already at zero. All his action is on the line. I mean, you can put 10,000 on just Vermont money line, whatever you want to do. Uh, again, it's free to enter. So get aggressive or, or if you want to play conservative, some small dogs, it's your call. Uh, but make sure you download the SGPN app. Get your chance to win $3,000. All right, let's do it. Let's head to Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, Loyola, Chicago, laying one against Ohio State. Total sitting at 130. Three. Uh, let's, I mean, one, uh, Ohio State, I did see uh, when Bet sends out the reports. One of the most bet teams uh, for this first round is the action on Ohio State. Love me some Ramblers, seventh in effective field goal percentage, 22nd in the nation in defensive efficiency. They have the experience, obviously, to make a, a run, and they, they just seem to play really well rounded as a team. Ohio state though, has a very good offense, kind of interesting, similar matchup almost, but Ohio state kind of coming in cold here. One and four. I, I'm obviously on the Ramblers laying the short number here. Colby, what are you doing? Don't say anything outrageous. Sean. <laughs> no. All right. Uh, look, I'm on the Ramblers too. And, and uh, we've seen it all year. We, I remember going back to opening night when the zips played Ohio state, Ohio state fortunate to win that game with the buzzer beater by Zed key sister Jean shells over here. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> and they had like uh, Jay brought it up. They have the nucleus of this team that is well yeah. experienced. They're well versed. They've been in in multiple NCAA tournaments. You go back to Lucas Williamson. He was on the team that went to the Final Four. How, yeah, it's unclear how you bet against Loyola. That's what concerns me. Like, who's mm. not coming? I understand Ohio State, well, big alumni, you know, big fan base. But how how are we? How is this not going to be a situation where Loyola is chalk? And Ohio State lost what in the first round of season ago to Oral Roberts. Uh, perhaps, it, you know, it will happen again. I, I just feel like th this Buckeye team has been kind of bad towards the end of the season. So Lo Loyola Chicago got up. We, I was really impressed with them in the Missouri Valley tournament. Uh, I got, I got the Ramblers. I think there's just a flat out better. Team. Oh yeah. I mean, I'm, I'm not betting Ohio state. I came in with a strong fade, the big 10 stance. Yeah. And I'm going to follow through on my words. Sean. I mean, we're on the Richmond money line. So if you're looking for some, uh, some guys to fade the big 10, well, I would, Obviously not Michigan State. Not Unlike that day. coward at the Burbank <laughs> airport. Follow through on my words. <laughs> exactly. 
All right. Uh, Jacksonville State, Auburn squaring off. Auburn laying 16 against Jacksonville State. Total sits at 139. Uh, this is your classic 215. A huge, huge margin here. Of course, Bellarmine won the Ace Sun tournament, but are suspended from postseason play. So uh, stupid. Because it's their first year. And that's no, their second oh, year. Oh no, sorry. Yeah. And, and why is it why are they still it's suspended? It's a four year ban or a four year process, not Probation a ban, I guess. Period. Yeah, yeah. Uh it's ridiculous. Uh, I feel like that's gotta but, be updated. But the ASAP. team that they beat in the championship, they're not going. Yeah, the Jacksonville Dolphins, who beat the Jacksonville State <laughs> Gamecocks. I mean, it, it's ri- ridiculous, ridiculous here. They, they go with the regular season champ, which is Jacksonville state, which is why I'm taking Auburn minus the points because yeah. they don't belong. No. And, and there's like a, <laughs> fi- there's a five point uh, free throw uh, disparity here that I'm also looking to fade. Uh, Jackson Jacksonville state is good from uh, behind the three. I think that's how Aub- they would stick around in this well, game. Auburn needs to step it up. They're, they're five and four over their last nine games. So they need a Tune up game. Yeah. What better way to tune up than against the 16 seed? Uh, sorry, a 15 seed. And, and to hear Colby attack a 15 seed like this, a ranked this above ridiculous. Georgia State. Yes. What yes. Universe are we living and, and in? And Colby? what favors? All right. Look, Auburn was part of that Will Wade probe as well. All right. Did, did <laughs> Bruce Pearl sell did, did Colby yelling at the UCLA <laughs> game lead to Will Wade's demise? It might have. It got the ball rolling. <laughs> did Bruce Pearl sell the committee a Cadillac each or something? Because I don't understand how they got the gift of Jacksonville State it in is, the first it round. Is, uh, how is Last Jacksonville thing? State a yeah. 15 seed? What Georgia yeah. State's a 16? And they gave him the Midwest, which is wide open. Auburn uh, dropping bags. I don't know what's going on, uh, but yeah, you got to ride all Jacksonville here. Play State. The points. Jacksonville State catching more of the action as well. So really? Go figure Square that sharps. out. <laughs> Are you on? You're on Auburn right yeah, as well. Yeah, yeah, by a mile. All right. We're by not, the way, we're we're, first half unders on those games too. Don't forget. <laughs> uh, and uh, looks like the the first four game is tipping off live. So feel free to chime in on a first half under uh, update as we get those. Yes. Move it into the 14, three game, Montana state catching 14 and a half against Texas tech plus 800 on the money line. One thirty two and a half is the total Montana state free throws. 75%, a f- mm-hmm. almost a, a full six points better than Texas tech. Now I think Texas tech can make a little bit of a run in the bracket itself, but I love me some Montana state. They shoot the ball too. Well, very effective uh, field goal percentage uh, top, uh, you know, top 50 in the country. I, Texas tech has a really good defense, so they'll have their hands full, but I think between the free throw shooting and just how well they shoot in general, maybe I'm getting cute here, yes. but give me Montana no. state plus 14 and a half. Uh, uh, are you saying that because Allen Berg is, you know, you, you Montana state alum that yes. came on the fellow, show last time win bet trader. He's a Montana state guy. I'm sure he's on the 14 and a half. What are you doing? Cody? And I'm sure he'll tell you it's the year of the Bobcat. They went all the way to the FCS national championship in football. I, you got to take them here. This is a team that, that played Colorado, took Colorado to overtime in Boulder and the buffs are good in Boulder. Then they also went to the pit where New Mexico, you know, they're an average team, but the pit is a live place and they played them close. I think Montana state will cover this line. Texas tech gets the win. Kramer. You're it, uh, Mr. Chuck. Should I order you some more Chuck over here? <laughs> there are times when the major conference team has a size advantage and an experience advantage that you, you gotta be careful because this Texas tech team, we we've been hammering it about UCLA, but Texas tech they're they're on my list. Why are they on my list? Mm. Team full of dogs with experience. I understand they have a new coach, but the players remember Colby. Well, the, the coach players, was there too, he was, but yeah. he wasn't the top dog. It's a different story when you're the top dog. This Texas tech defense is a, is a ton to deal with. Maybe Montana state gets them into free throw or to foul trouble or something yep. strange like that. That's the angle. I appreciate your try. Lay the points. I'm staying <laughs> chalky. Uh, chalk rock chalk uh, over here with Kramer. I'm back. Yale. Purdue, a uh, fun little uh, 413 game here. Yale is a plus 800 money line dog total sitting at 143. I am an Ivy League expert, as you know. I went two and zero against the spread in the Ivy League tournament in games we picked. <laughs> Purdue laying 15. Oh man, I I really want to fade this Purdue team. 
Am I getting cute by taking Yale and plus 15? I, the matchup that I really like here now, Purdue, obviously top of the charts offensively, big size difference, uh, third in the nation of uh, offensive efficiency. The thing about Yale that I really like is they defend the three ball pretty well. Uh, 34th in the nation defending the three. And that's how yeah. Purdue lives and dies. So I think the fact that Yale is going to be able to contest some of these threes uh, makes them interesting at, at, at plus 15. I'm taking it. I'm taking it. Colby, what are you smiling over there? You, you, uh, you getting some deep nuggets here? Well, I'm just trying to convince myself to take Yale and uh, I'm not going to do it. I think okay. Purdue has emphasized, you know, they lost in the first round uh, last year to North Texas. That's and, true. They could have a chip on their shoulder. I think they're going to remember that. So I, I'm going to take the Boilermakers here, lay in that big number. I just think that, that how about the size difference? That's the real, the yeah. real storyline here. I feel like, and that's why Purdue is going to make it hell for uh, I know Purdue's not a great defensive team this year. Matt Painter historically always so, has good defenses, but the height is going to be a problem. They're going to show up defensively against Yale. Give me Purdue minus the points. Bottom half of the country in free throws. Good luck covering a 15 point spread. And you know what smart teams can do? They can come out and they can be a little tricky with the defenses they play. Purdue, a team that can, they, they're willing to turn the ball over at times. Plus, come on, guys, fade Matt Painter. What, yes. are, you, what are you doing? <laughs> Big Ten follow through fade. Give me Yale. Uh, this is just too big of a number. I, Live dog in my mind. I'm not telling you to bet the 800, but I stay, might stay, stay tuned. tuned. <laughs> okay, Delaware. Also plus Ka-ka! 800. Oh my god. <laughs> also plus 800 on the is, money is line. Is that a blue hen that I just heard? <laughs> <laughs> Against Villanova. Villanova laying 15. Total sitting at 133. A whopping 133. Villanova eighth in the nation offensively Delaware though, 36 ineffective field goal, uh, percentage. So they're not horrible as, as, as our buddy, uh, Jay Billis, new friend of the program pointed oh, out yeah. Villanova hits their free throws highest in NCAA history, 82.3% against Delaware is still pretty good. 74.2%. The, the free throws alone have me taken a Villanova minus 15, although matchup wise, I do think I, I'm as a Villanova Homer and a, as a guy who has some Villanova futures along with UCLA, I do think uh, I'm slightly nervous about how big this number is. This is a little brother situation too, probably. Well, that well, is the and, fun and, part. And Delaware, yeah. the, the kids who are playing in Delaware, again, Delaware really close to Philadelphia. Jameer I can see Nelson them, Jr. I can see some Delco kids with a chip on their shoulder being like, hey, oh, Villanova, too good to too good to bring me in. Jay Wright, too good for a scholarship. I, I totally see that the free throw percentage. I just can't do it. Give me Villanova well, minus 15 well, Colby. And, uh, the thing you also have to circle is the three point percentage. Yeah. Nova 26th in the nation at shooting the three. Um, and Jay Wright is Delaware is horrible at defending the three too. Yeah. Uh, that's why I'm all over the wildcats here. Jay Wright. And that's another thing is you rarely see him losing the first round. I think what George Mason got him once with Jimmy Lar- Laranega. So I, I'm on, I'm on Nova. I think they roll. But isn't this Villanova team not quite as good as? I mean, we watched a lot of Villanova this year, and it. it my Kramer take, is, a, is he slightly a Villanova hater? That's well, going to catch up later. Here's my problem. I fell in love with this Delaware team. He did. Jameer Nelson Jr., uh, Ryan Allen, Dylan Painter, Andrew. Co- I just think they fell in love with this team going on you that got, tournament run. You got season run. tickets next year, right? Uh, you know, perhaps this is a, a bet coming from the heart. But give me the blue hands. <laughs> Don't worry, I'm gonna pick a cat later. Back to back, uh, double digit dogs for Kramer. What is happening? This is March. Not not going chalky there, Ryan. No, no. Uh, this is a hell of a, uh, a matchup here. Miami, USC. Right now, the Trojans one and a half point favorites. Total sitting at one hundred and forty there. USC top 50 nationally in both offensive and defense, very tall team. I mean, watching them live, yeah. you can just see, Hey, rebounding is going to be a little easier for this USC team. Uh, they got some quality wins over San Diego state, UCLA, Miami though. Very good offense. Top 20 offense. They take care of the ball. There is a massive free throw uh, discrepancy here though. Miami 74.3% to USC's only 66.6 uh, and Miami eighth in the nation in turnover percentage, as far as like not turning it over. I didn't think I, I, I thought I would be on USC and they, the physicality of the team makes them sneaky to me, but 
I think I'm going to have to go Miami here. Colby, what are you doing? I haven't changed horses midstream in a while. All right. Uh, <laughs> Sunday, I, I mean, said. The offensive rebounding is insane. Miami, 311th in the nation versus USC, 26th in the country. And that's, and that's my logic here. So Sunday, uh, you know, I've pretty much stayed with all my picks for the most part. This is one a new theory that I've changed. I'm going USC. Give me the Trojans. I think they're just the better team at the end of the day. Miami faded down the stretch. And we also know this. The ACC was garbage this year. Pac-12 wow. makes a statement. Uh, look, I think, you know, on one hand, this is like a big, this is a size versus guard play game. And generally, I, I would agree that, or we all would agree that guard play is king. But th these Pac-12 teams come in and overwhelm these teams with their size. And, you know, this is a game where I was a little surprised to see the betting, uh, the betting splits uh, because USC is getting more of the action. Really? It, yeah, because, I, I mean, I kind of thought, you know, to your point, ACC, Miami, they have the guard play. It's, it's an easy narrative. I've heard a lot of the, the mainstream media talk about uh, this Miami team, but Andy Infeld, the master of staying unspoken about in the city of Los Angeles, signed a huge extension this year, and his team has been a good tournament team, period. All of his teams. So it's crazy to me they're only laying a point and a half. So I'm going to take USC. Uh, you're making a good case, Ken, but, man, my, my free throw trend, it spits right in the No, it face. does. A lot of things do, including the guard play. But like the, if, the offensive rebounding makes me want to consider taking USC, but I'll, I'll stick it out. I know. They're, they're tough to box Th This out. profiles like a mid-major uh, versus a major conference team when it comes to the size differential here. Yes. Talking differentials. All right. And uh, the next game would be the 11 uh, seed winner Rutgers Notre Dame versus Alabama. I, I, I mean, I don't know who's going to win, but it, it would, I, I think I'm going to be taking the 11 seed against Alabama in the points. Uh, well, I will, I guess we'll wait to see and get a number on that game. Next up the Virginia tech Hokies squaring off against Texas Longhorns total sitting at 124 and a half Texas right now favored by one point. Over at win bets, Kramer, I'll let you take it away. Make a case for your Hokies. Uh, I mean, look, I understand why you're going to tell me, hey, they just won the conference championship. They're high. They're celebrating. I mean, they were celebrating. They were oh, they yeah. were doing all the Making things you jokes, go. They're, Storm sti Murphy they're still celebrating. I'm seeing <laughs> shirts being sold. They ACC were, they, champs. They brought confetti back to Blacksburg to throw up in the air. <laughs> really? Really? Oh my God. How can we, we got to hammer the long horns. <laughs> but when I see the culture that is being brought to this campus oh, no. culture by Mike young <laughs> and now coach pry, who, by the way, was out congratulating How did this become a coach. Pry coach pry team? is out uh, congratulating and pumping up the Hokies wrestling team as they go off to compete. <laughs> this team is playing together. And sometimes I said it had 2007 giants vibes. Sometimes teams play together well, and sometimes they want to win together, and sometimes they have the perfect collection of a point guard and a glue guy and a fucking scorer and a guy who has irrational confidence like J.R. fucking Smith. <laughs> and you're telling me Wait, this... are you comparing Storm Murphy to <laughs> no. J.R. Smith? Hunter, Hunter Couture is J.R. Smith in this oh, okay. metaphor. Because the Storm Murphy, J.R. Smith comparison. No, Sto Storm like Murphy that. is like uh, Steve Nash. That okay. would be a good comp. John Paxson, according to Patty C. I, oh, are, okay. Uh, uh, better shot, much, oh, much wow. better, and better handle. That's a disrespectful. Whoa, that's, Whoa. A, that's much better. Strong, coming at J also, JP like that. Got also, some take quakes in where, there. I'm where, where's the arm sleeve better too? Um, <laughs> and we have this Texas team that, uh, while we like the coach, we, we liked them at Texas Tech. They have underperformed this year. And while we heard a great reason to maybe like them, right? The talent is there. They underperformed. Maybe they were able to come back. But when I saw the look in that room. When Texas caught Virginia Tech, they knew it was coming. They knew it was coming, and they didn't like it. Because you know the one thing that a fucking giant bull ready to mount his mate is scared of? A fucking war turkey. Gobble, gobble, bitches. Let's go, Hokies. Mount his mate. Yeah, uh, I, I, I kind of lost track of what a female uh, cow was I called. I really use the soundboard uh, right now. Uh, uh, Colby, follow that. 
Follow let's, both let, of you. Follow that. Let's have a uh, unbiased to take on here. Yeah. I, you know, numbers <laughs> wise, I do like Virginia Tech, third in the nation, three point percentage. Ding. They, they uh, Texas can't shoot the three to save their life. Ding. Uh, Texas has lost three games in a row against tournament quality teams. Ding. The 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 only thing but, is Virginia Tech a tournament quality team is well, the question. And, and that's the other that's the other thing. Did they just get lucky? I mean, one of the commandments oh. we didn't really get to was fading the tournament teams and and lucky. Virgi- <laughs> As See, you I'm pointed gonna, out, I'm Sean, pick, the goons in the ACC office wanted to plow the road for Coach I, K. I, I, I wanted, but to, Mike Young and the boys came in and I ruined wanted, that asshole's party. I, I wanted to fade <laughs> Texas coming in here, so for Kramer's sake, I will take Virginia Tech. No, also, no, it's, it's super fun to do the horns, horns down. down. That's true. Look, I, I, Matt made great, great points, and I, I wouldn't be Texas won the transfer portal in the offseason. Maybe they get it together mm. and and they have a, a, a you know big time run. But come on. Texas is, is, has been, I can't root for Texas ever. All yeah. right. So uh, go, go Hokies horns down. All right. All right. Colby's doing it. <laughs> he's, he's doing it. He's, I promise I won't switch Tech. on this side either. Hokies. All right. Kramer was just talking about uh, mounting your mate. And if you have any <laughs> mounting uh, plans in the near future, you want to make sure you head to manscaped.com and use that promo code S. GP get 20% off and free shipping. I bought my manscaped uh, travel bag with me here to Las Vegas. They even have a uh, fun name for it. Again, you don't want your, uh, your balls may look like punching bags, but don't treat them like one. You got to use that skin, 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 safe, proprietary technology. You get the crop preserver, ball, deodorant, crop reviver toner. I mean, you know, that's the whole point of daylight savings that you can tend to your crops. <laughs> what better way to tend to your crops by heading by manscape the head over to manscape.com, get you the lawn mower 4.0, tend those crops, 20% off and free shipping manscape.com promo code S G P. Oh <laughs> man. I mean, adding the daylight savings part, uh, yeah. just, just just all fantastic. Right, I just so wanted you to keep up. talking and see what other stuff you could throw in there. This is a fun one. Chattanooga, Illinois. Chattanooga's catching seven and a half. Total sits at 136 and a half. Man, I I I want to just fade this Illinois team, but maybe, maybe they can take care of business against Chattanooga. But Chattanooga, 28th in the nation in free throws. I just don't believe in this Illinois team at all. Uh, you know, they have coffee Cockburn and uh, <laughs> sorry if I pronounce it the way it's spelled manscape. Needs I know, to get all I, over that. Where's the NIL, the deal? NIL the deal fu- for Cockburn is just manscape it, has a fire hose of money. They got, they got to find these guys. They, they really got to meet up with a Cockburn there. No, no, Sean, it's Coburn. Oh, sorry. Coburn that might kill his NIL deal. Uh, <laughs> Illinois to me is just a, a classic fade team. I don't know. They're big 10. They came in with a lot of hype. I, I just don't see it. I mean, Ken Palm has, this as a five point game. They're getting seven and a half. I, I don't really, it's less about for me, loving the Chattanooga team and more just about wanting to fade Illinois. Uh, so I give me Chattanooga choo choo plus seven and say, a half. You gotta, you gotta get that, that train sound effect. Choo choo. Colby, what's the play here? Yeah, yeah, and look, I, I made this case with Matt. The four thirteens, I fi- I feel, are more dangerous than the the five twelves. I got Chattanooga winning this, and I got them winning this outright. And wow. I think this matchup, Sylvia De Souza, the big man for for Chattanooga, yeah. Kansas transfer. We love him, Sean, because he picked up a chair and almost uh, hit a guy in the head. Also uh, performed well in DJ Madness. Yeah, yeah, he did, <laughs> he did, and uh, so he's a. He, I think they have someone that can go up against Kofi Coburn, and then when you add in Malachi Smith. And the fact that Andre Corbello has struggled with this Illini team this year, I'm on, I'm on the mocks. This is one of the games I circled because the way that they match up, this, this Chattanooga team can defend a three-point line. And if you disturb Illinois' ability to shoot threes, they're beatable. So I, I think Colby and I might be sharing a dog later on. Oh, the and Chattanooga choo And it's not going to be a small dog. No, no small dog sound effect there. <laughs> Speaking of dogs, Texas A&M. Corpus Christi, the Islanders out to an early lead, 14 to 10 against the Southern Tigers, 1306 left to go 24 total points. I believe my first half under, I got at 63, 63 over at win bet. So uh, now it's 15. 
So, uh, oh, maybe uh, slightly a little, uh, hopefully, it sounded like they got out to a fast start scoring. Hopefully things cool off and we, we start a 1-0 uh, tradition here. 10-minute mark, 31.5 points would be your halfway point. Okay, there you go. Cal State Fullerton catching 18 points against the Duke. This should be a 16 seed, guys. <laughs> Blue Devils. Uh, if Colby's out on Cal State Fullerton, <laughs> it's, it's tough to make a case. Cal State Fullerton does have almost a uh, four-point percentage uh, better on free throws. Duke has failed to cover the spread in four straight games, obviously losing outright to uh, Virginia Tech in the ACC tournament. Didn't cover against Syracuse. Didn't cover against Miami. Didn't cover against North Carolina in the regular season. No, <laughs> I, I don't. I don't want to take Cal State Fullerton, but again, this Duke team has really struggled to cover these big numbers, but this might be the get right spot. Colby, lead me along. What, what should I do here? Well, the Bruce Pearl sold, sold a Cadillac to get Jacksonville State. Well, Coach K, <laughs> Coach K, you know, gets Cal State Fullerton. They're just giving them. They're like, here, take maybe the worst team in the tournament. Uh, I, I'm all over Duke here. I, I know that normally they, they haven't been a cover machine. I know they normally get Yuck. more value. Um, than what they really should get. And, uh, but Duke is, is just going to destroy them. I mean, look, look uh, the Titans were very fortunate to win the, uh, the Big West. And when you look at all the analytics, it all favors Duke. And I, I just think they're going to run away with this. They're coming off a loss. Give me Duke by 30. Do you know the things that Coach K did to this team since they lost <laughs> both his, his tribute day uh, against North Carolina of all teams. And he's then really, and he's had their year for a couple days. Here. They lost the ACC tournament championship to a public school. Do you know how that looks? Cole, uh, Sean, th this is, uh, this is Duke all day. Uh, here's the thing I might take away from watching the Hokies play them. The Hokies who have some decent size and athletic ability were only able to stay with Duke and stay ahead of Duke because of the way they play defense, which is elite. And because of the way they shoot the three ball, which is elite. I don't think Cal State Fullerton is, is either of those things. And they're smaller. Yeah. So this feels like again, a bully there's ball a game. slight uh, edge Cal State Fullerton and free throw percentage. But other why is it that, only 18? It is, <laughs> it is yeah. tough to make. Yeah. And oh, what Matt brought up the point of traveling cross country. This game's in South Carolina. Mm. It's a layup yeah. for Duke. It's a get right spot. <laughs> the goons in the league office will make sure Duke covers <laughs> the spread here. Duke minus 18, unfortunately, I think is the play. And over to Milwaukee, Wisconsin, Iowa State, the Cyclones catching four and a half plus 155 on the money line against LSU, the Tigers. Total sitting at a really low 127 and a half. Uh, LSU, fifth in the nation in defensive efficiency. They force a lot of turnovers. Uh, number one in steal percentage, number two in the nation in, in turnover percentage overall, uh, fourth in the uh, nation in three point defense. They got some notable wins against Kentucky, Tennessee, Alabama, and they just fired Will Wade. Very, I, uh, very, I want to know. Very interesting here. I think you can go two ways. The team can completely unravel, or if they were out on Will Wade, they can say, Hey, this is a stick it to Will Wade game. Iowa State plays some really good defense, 10th in the nation. They have some quality wins as well. LSU, almost five point better in um, the uh, free throw percentage. Iowa State, a popular dog, according to win bet. I'm leaning LSU, but I want to hear Colby's take on if they'll show up for the new coach. Well, that's the thing. What, what an opportunity for Kevin Nickelberry, the interim head coach, and not only getting Iowa State, but getting this region. I think, I mean, if they're able to, to get it together, which is a big if because who knows the, the state of that locker room. Uh, they have a chance. They're, they're a very, they are a very talented team. They could win this whole bracket yeah. on that side. Um, but I don't trust that they have it all together. I'm going to take the Cyclones. I just think Iowa State towards the end of the year playing better ball. I think Otzelberger's done a great job keeping his team intact. They went through that crazy losing streak midseason. They seem to have picked it up since then. Give me the Cyclones. This is a tricky one because, to your point, LSU could come out hungry because maybe the players don't give a shit about Will Wade. We tag it. Yeah. And they see that they're kind of being – like they'll feel this is disrespectful because what is Iowa State, Colby? A team we don't like to bet on when they leave the friendly confines. But this is, this is going to be an Iowa State crowd, I think, in Milwaukee. Yeah, I, you know, I'm going to listen to our, uh, our resident senior trader about the home, home court not really mattering there. So – I think Iowa State. I feel like, I feel like I have to take LSU. I, it, this is a tournament game, and I just 
talent's going to rise to the top, and I don't, I don't really see how uh, Iowa State scores a ton. My only concern is that LSU doesn't take care of the ball. Like that would be or the, the state of the locker room. It's got to be in there. But right? do you think? Do you think they're not? They're going to not care? I don't know. They some of these guys have it will be in the NBA draft. You know, so I, I don't know. Is this? Uh, it's a weird scenario. We've never I seen. I, I never recall I seeing a team a coach get fired going into the NCAA tournament. <laughs> Do they like Will Wade, or was he just the guy that paid him? Yeah, he, I'm sure they liked him if he paid him. Right? Yeah, who doesn't like to get paid? Yeah. But the next guy comes in. It's the the deal is still in Look, place. Look, when you pay me money, I like you more. All right. <laughs> Shout out to Win Bet. All right, UAB Houston. Uh, heading into Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, UAB, the Dragons, plus 310 on the money line. Total sitting at 136 and a half. Houston is ranked as the fourth team in the country, according to Ken Palm. Uh, 10th in the nation in offensive efficiency, 11th in the nation defensive efficiency. I feel like they're a liability in the future market for some places. Third best offensive rebounding team in the country, but UAB. Again, coming in super, super hot. Uh, 28th in the nation in offensive efficiency. Ninth nationally in three points. Uh, they force a ton of turnovers. 13th in the nation defensive steal percentage. They've won seven in a row. They've won in impressive fashion. And they have a uh, seven-point free throw uh, percentage advantage. Lock it up. Give me UAB plus eight. Colby. I'm going to take the points. A lot of people are calling this for the outright upset. I don't see that, mm. but I do think these, these teams, uh, I mean, UAB brought in a slew of transfers. They're all guys that played at power, you know, six schools. And uh, when you look at it, I think it comes down to a very close game and Kelvin Sampson's the more proven coach. Houston gets the win escapes, um, but UAB covers at eight and a half. I mean, Houston's on the short list of teams we said could win the national championship based yep. on the profile, but I, I'm kind of with you. If there's a team that just, it's so hard for me to ever lay a big number with them, especially when there's reasons to take UAB, uh, especially with the free throw angle that Sean points out uh, with the fact that UAB can, it can have lights out from behind the arc. Super athletic. They, they, they're similar teams with their athleticism. And I'll be honest, like, I think if you look at just overall balance, like they're probably the best team that most people have no clue how good they are. Uh, yeah, and I, I watched a ton of the UAB uh, in that tournament, and I, they surprised me a couple times. I thought after that triple overtime they would be set up for a massive letdown, and no, th th this team just takes care of business. I'm, they kind of have Providence vibes, if I'm honest. I kind of also tend to agree with Colby. Like, uh, not to call for a middle, but I, I don't know if I'm going to pick UAB to advance in my bracket. Nope. I'm not. Stay yeah. tuned. Davidson, Michigan State. Michigan State, lane one against Davidson. Total sitting at 140. Michigan State, uh, different than other Michigan State teams. They actually shoot the three ball very well. 18th in the nation, 38%. Uh, Davidson actually shoots it better at 38 and a half percent. Davidson 11th in the nation defensive efficiency, both uh, pretty good free throw uh, percentage teams. Davidson, one of the most bet uh, teams, according to the really? bet. Uh, yes. According to their, whatever their liability is so far, I know we're fading mostly the uh, big 10, but I'm not going against mm. Tom Izzo tournament time. The, the guy's just a beast. Give me Michigan state all day. Mm, mm. Well, you know who's a beast? It's not necessarily Tom Izzo. It's Bob McKillop on the other yes. side of the coaching, uh, you know, matchup there. Best coach there. in the country. Uh, he's very underrated. If you, I mean, he was the same coach that had Steph Curry. He's actually was has been a part of the Davidson basketball program since 1978, with the exception Jesus. of a of a high school stop. But uh, yeah, and and this Davidson team. First off, Foster Lawyer, their point guard, Michigan State transfer, he struggled scoring the ball with Tom Izzo. Well, he goes to Bob McKillop. Bob McKillop makes him look like uh, Rex Chapman or something. But um, <laughs> Davidson is is just a flat out. They're, they've yeah, kind of they're been a better team. All, all on, on all fronts, I feel like. This Wrong Michigan team, State baby. team is not the same team that we're used to with Tom Izzo. They turn the ball over at a, at a crazy rate. Their defensive rating is 177th. That's not what a yeah, Tom so Izzo on. coach team that Sean, had success yeah. has. I know you like Tom Izzo we, and we love him in the second game of the weekend. Yeah. And the first, game but, but go. this team, I like mean, when, Davidson, when he didn't foul, when they were up five and the spread was six and a half, that is, <laughs> game, that is not a guy you go against. Right? 
this Davidson team shoots free throws well. They take care of the ball yeah, well. Congratulations, Davidson. They have so good for you. They have insane size for a mid major. Let's go, Colby. We're on the right side of this one. Oh yeah, I can't wait. Wildcats could be. I'll see you on the right side of history. <laughs> there you go. And they Wildcats would play Duke after that little North Carolina matchup. <laughs> Please, someone clip Ryan's uh, cat sound effect so we can add it to the sound. <laughs> so that was seductive wildcat. Yeah, that's the coog over. <laughs> What's that's the, the coog that seduced Colby at the uh, coog. What was the coach's name again, Colby? Which, which uh, Bob McKillop? Bob McKillop yeah, after yeah. dark sounds like that. <laughs> Colgate catching seven points against Wisconsin. Home game for Wisconsin in Milwaukee. Mm. Badgers laying seven. Total sits at. 139 Colgate as I learned uh my poor Lehi team Colgate is just a bunch of uh bunch of dudes who shoot the ball 11th in the country in effective field goal percentage second I mean they're shooting 40% from behind three Wisconsin 30 uh 31st of or they only shoot 31% from behind can, the arc can I ask a serious question sure why isn't Colgate favored <laughs> Colgate though, there is a, almost a five point free throw differential here uh -oh. at Colgate. I don't know how these guys don't, yeah, but shoot you're a Colgate three. hater, man, right? Oh yeah. I hate Colgate, but I love money. I like fresh and breath. <laughs> Colgate ruined the season for Lehigh. Yeah. They also might've ruined the season for Syracuse because they beat him by 15 at Syracuse <laughs> on November 20th. Colgate's a good team and they can show up on the road. I, I think at the very least they could get the garbage here. Give me Colgate plus seven. They won 15 games in a row. <laughs> I'm taking the Raiders plus there the points. Is, I know this game's play, being played indoors, but over under on the amount of uh, containers of sunscreen used in this game. Very, very wow. pale, very pale starting 10. You'll see yeah. out there. There's going to be a glare on the screen for sure. Johnny Davis and everyone else. Is uh, I, I, I love this Colgate team. I, I think again, they do the things that you'd like when someone's going to upset someone They're They're a very efficient team on offense. They shoot the three ball. Well, I don't love to your point that they miss the free throws. Yeah, but that's, I like, and how can they, I, I don't get a Patriot league team that shoots I just don't understand how you can shoot 40% from behind the arc and below 70% at the free throw line. Like, how does that even happen? Another thing is, is Colgate's battle tested. They were in the tournament. Now they did lose to Experience. Arkansas, but the, the year, the year prior, the, the tournament prior that we had, uh, they played, I remember Alan Cooley was sweating it out in overtime. Tennessee beat Colgate barely, but this is a guy that was on, on edge. Yeah. The Raiders I mean, might be able to get it done here. Yeah, Love it. Money line alert. Well, alert, alert, money line alert. All right, uh, let's get into it here. TCU versus Seton Hall. The Horn Frogs lay in one. Total sits at 129. Seton Hall, 26 in the nation defensive efficiency. They've won six straight uh, before getting knocked out of the Big East tourney by UConn. TCU plays some good defense, though. 24th in the nation. And there's a massive free throw difference here. Seton Hall, 75.6. TCU, 66%. Uh, almost a full 10% there. TCU is the second best offensive rebounding team in the country. I I'm not in love with this Seton hall team, Seton hall team, but I mean, when they're the spreads this small and the free throw differential is that big, give me the team. That's going to get the bucket, the free throws. Give me Seton hall. I'm on. I, I disagree. I am on the, the horn frogs. Jamie uh, Dixon. This is where the big 12 shows flexes their muscle Dick, and he's got yeah. a little experience there with, with a uh, little big East it's, action. Yeah. And this is the best TCU team I think I've ever seen. Um, so, I, and they played down the stretch. They played pretty damn well. You know, they, they beat Kansas in Fort Worth. They took, they almost beat them in Lawrence. Uh, I think TCU, remember that comeback against Texas too, in the big 12 tournament, TCU's playing good ball right now. I'm going to take the horn frogs to get it done. Uh, here's my problem. It's a bad matchup because I think they have to go inside and I think Seton all has a pretty good defense yeah. there. And you know, at the end of the day, uh, I am a Jersey legend. So Jersey legends roll <laughs> you with Seton Hall. Theisman Let's go in the, uh, in the New Jersey hall, of which, fame. which by the way, we got to get ourselves up to that golf tournament. I mean, it basically <laughs> The, uh, everyone, everyone, Larry, the cable hang, guy. Hang out with guests. Yeah. I mean, who knew Jim McMahon, he goes there. Oh, oh yeah. Hell the whole yeah. stable. Speaking of stable, stable duel.com. It is where horse racing meets DFS. Again, if you're looking for a little extra action this weekend or just any time, fire it up. 
put it get the get the horses going on one of your uh, screens there and and just enjoy the ride enjoy the sweat so fun putting together a stable dual lineup watching the watching the ponies it's just horse racing's an extra little bit of rush i'm sure we're going to be playing the ponies uh here out in vegas just uh, they got they got the tvs up at the sports book may as well have a little action stable duel they have free and paid games Download it over at StableDuel.com. You can win as much as $25,000 with one entry. That's right. Download now over at StableDuel.com. See how many winners you can pick in your stable. I'll see you in the winner's circle. StableDuel.com. Oh, <laughs> Play race with Sean, you did it. You, you faked them out again. I, I know. Uh, we wait. have our... Uh, Cole is normally the guy doing our uh, directing. He's back today, so he may have missed the time yesterday. <laughs> but I had the old explanation about uh, faking out the uh, director. Good, just Again, good, I, clean fun. I fall for the pump fake every time. <laughs> <laughs> now we, we are at a crossroads here. Do we walk through our bracket and final bracket predictions or and then save our lock, 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 and dog? Uh, for the very end of the show, or do we do them now and then the final bracket? Predictions? I think we we whip through a bracket real quick, right? Yeah. All right. Let's. Do I don't that. think we need to get into it too hot and heavy, but uh, should we start go region by region? Let's do it. West, guns, any Zags? Yep. Uh, Boise State, Memphis. I, I got Boise State. I got I'm Memphis. on Memphis. Uh, UConn, New Mexico. UConn, A Aggie up. UConn advancing. I'm writing mine down, by the way. Arkansas, Vermont. <laughs> Arkansas, Arkansas yeah, rolls. Sorry, chalky. Matt. Bama versus the winner of Rutgers. And Give me Rutgers, Notre, Notre Dame. Dame. Uh, I'm going to take Bama. I think I, I, the more I, I think about this, the more it's too cute to, to fade them. It early. matters who they're playing. If it's Rutgers, Rutgers wins. If it's, if it's Notre Dame, I think Bama wins. Two sides of every coin. Pick Dundee. Benedict Dundee. Tex, Texas Tech, Montana State. You know we're riding with Tech. Red Raiders. Yep. I root for all teams that have a tech think, in their I name, think, uh, except for Georgia Tech. Yeah, I mean, I have Montana State getting the cover, but uh, Texas State. Michigan State, there. Davidson. Davidson with the upset. Yeah. Michigan State. Davidson advances. Duke, Fullerton. Yep, Duke. Duke. Okay, so we got uh, Gonzaga versus Boise State or Memphis. Gonzaga. Uh, Zags advance. Dangerous. Dangerous game. Dangerous game. Boise State gives them I know, a run. Yeah, no, I think Memphis is going to give them a game with oh, their Memphis, athleticism. Okay. Uh, I'm going to take the Zags, but okay. I would not be surprised if this is tied up a couple minutes left. Quickly defined in the dictionary as rapidly <laughs> with pace. Yukon, Arkansas. You know I'm taking uh, Arkansas to advance yep. here. Sui. New Mexico State, Arkansas. Watch out for the Aggies. Give, give me the Arkansas, though. <laughs> I, love your, I love how you always have the Aggies. Watch out, but Bam I'm going to take the other side. <laughs> Bama versus Texas Tech. Give me Texas Tech. Yep. Uh, I, well, I, it depends, yeah. but uh, yeah, I'll, I'll go, I'll go Texas Tech. Colby's choose yeah. your own adventure is getting crazy. Davidson versus Duke. Duke. Michigan State beats Duke. Let's go. Whoa. What a way to end Coach K's career. Little brother Davidson upsets in the most embarrassing way ever. <laughs> Goes out to a smaller school in North Carolina. Give me Davidson. All right, Zags, Arkansas. Um, I that is a good game. Uh, Zags. Yeah, I'm going to take this eggs as well. And Texas Tech versus Davidson. I'll have Texas Tech. I have Texas Tech, yeah. And yeah, yeah I, got, I got Zags beating Arkansas and Texas Tech beating Michigan State. And then so who do you have representing the West in the Final Four? Oh, uh, this is where they get knocked out. Give me Texas Tech beating Gonzaga. I got the Zags. Zags. As much as I want to get Texas, I, I think the Zags go back to the Final Four. I think, I think it's too cute to pick the Zags not to make the Final Four. All right, what you want to go East? Baylor, Norfolk State. Baylor. 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 North Carolina, Marquette. Marquette, let's go. Marquette. Marquette. Wrong team favored. Remember, St. Mary's versus the winner of the play-in game, Wyoming or Indiana. I got St. Mary's. St. Mary's is good, and this is a home game for them, basically. I got Wyoming, Indiana. Ooh. We are kind of violating our uh, commandments, I think, Colby, but uh, I like that one, Sean. UCLA versus Akron. UCLA. UCLA. Oh. But Akron gets the cover. Agreed. <laughs> no, I mean, it's Te a massive Zips spread. Get the cover, yeah. Texas, Virginia Tech. Virginia Tech, unfortunately. Virginia Tech. Hokey, hokey, hokey high. Purdue, Yale. Purdue. You're going to take Yale? Give me Yale. Please Yale. take Yale on the Let's money go. line. Give me Yale. Yale. 
Uh, which White knuckle in it. Stay tuned for our dogs later. Murray State versus the Dons of San Francisco. Give me the Dons. Racers. Murray State. <laughs> and then we have Kentucky over St. Peter's, I assume. Kentucky. Yep. All right. Uh, Baylor versus Marquette. Baylor. Baylor. Mm, barely, right? This is a tricky one. Shaka could shock the world here. Uh, St. Mary's versus UCLA. This is a tricky one. Give me the I'm Bruins. taking UCLA. Bruins, UCLA. Tread lightly. I'm taking UCLA now, but later I might take St. Mary's. Okay. <laughs> Virginia Tech versus Yale. Give me the Hokies to advance to the sweet. See, that's 16. why Cole, that's yeah. why he has a beat as no. Yale winning. Purdue beats Virginia Tech. Oh. I got Virginia Tech moving on. They're gonna lose K- Kentucky though. We got the Dons versus Kentucky. No, we have Murray State. <laughs> All right, we have Murray State against Kentucky. Battle of Kentucky. Kentucky advances. Wildcats advance. All right, yeah, Kentucky. Baylor, UCLA. Give me the Bruins. I'm gonna, yep. t- I'm gonna take the Bruins as well. Let's go. Virginia Tech versus Kentucky. <laughs> I got Kentucky. <laughs> Purdue, Kentucky. I got Kentucky. Give me Kentucky. UCLA versus Kentucky. UCLA moves on. I got UCLA as well. UCLA as well. So uh, I have UCLA in the Zags. You have UCLA in the Zags. And Sean has UCLA and Texas Tech. Lots of diversity, guys. South region. Arizona versus the winner of the playing game. Arizona. Arizona. Uh, Sean, I assume you're on the same. Yeah. Seton Hall, TCU. TCU. Uh, I just have made a case for Seton Hall, so let's go Seton Hall. <laughs> Are you, are you final answer? Yes. Me too, as a Jersey legend. It seems like he's on the fence. Over Houston there. versus UAB. UAB Houston. for the upset. I can't get too cute. Houston advances. Uh, Illinois versus Chattanooga. Chattanooga. This is where the upset happens. I'm with you. Give me the mocks. Yes. Colorado State, Michigan. I'm going to have Illinois oh, winning, I'm sorry, but not cover. Nice. I like that middle. Colorado State versus Michigan. Ram it up. Just ram it. Just ram it. Uh, I'm with, on Colorado State as well. Tennessee versus Longwood. Bloodbath. Vols roll. Tennessee. Yeah, John? Tennessee. Uh, yep. And uh, Ohio State versus Sister Jean. Sister, Sister Jean. Jean. We all have Sister Jean. And Villanova versus Delaware. Nova. Villanova. Man, no. No, <laughs> no give me Villanova. No, Nova Loyola second round. What a game. All right. We got Arizona versus Seton Hall. I think Arizona rolls in this one. Too much size. Yeah. Yes. Houston Houston versus the Mox. Dangerous. See, I got this UAB Illinois. I got Illinois beating uh, UAB. I have Houston moving into. I got the Mox. One off an upset. Put them in the Sweet 16. Let's go. Colorado versus Tennessee. Is Uh, it Tennessee? Tennessee. Mm. Colorado State. Colorado State, sorry. You're going to bet on uh, Barnes Barnes to the Sweet 16, yes. This is a tricky one for me. But yeah, give me Tennessee. They're they're playing really good ball right now. All right, Sister Jean versus Villanova. If you, this is a tricky game, I actually think this is a harder matchup than Villanova Tennessee for 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 the Wildcats. They get it done, but Sister Jean gets the cover. Villanova. I'll I'll go Nova too. Yeah, I think I think Nova is the right play. I think they're they're pe- going to peak just, at the right Loyola time. Loyola matches up well against them though. Arizona. That, yeah, I mean three point line right. Arizona Houston. Uh, I got Arizona Chattanooga, Arizona advances, Arizona advances for me over Houston. Uh, you have Arizona, Illinois, yep. Sean. Yep. I got Arizona win it. Tennessee versus Nova, uh, Nova. No, I'm going to, yeah, I'm going to take Nova too. Jay, Wright. There and we go. then, uh, who you got? Uh, I got Arizona representing yeah, me too. This, uh, we have the same bracket. I love it. You're I have Villanova making it on to the final. Of court. course you do. Yeah. All right. Final bracket Midwest Kansas versus the winner of the playing game. Kansas. Kansas advances. Let's go. Nothing cute there. San Diego State versus Michael Crichton. San Diego State. Man, this is tough. We all went Aztecs, but I feel like everything's telling me to take Creighton, but we all went Aztecs on the show. Let's go Aztecs. We we did. You really talked me into it. Our gals, uh, let's let's roll with them. Iowa versus Richmond. Iowa gets the win. Richmond Upset Spiders. Special. Yep. Me and Sean are lockstep on this one. Love. And by the way, uh, the number has come down. It's inching closer to 420 uh, on the money line. Providence, South Dakota State. Come on. This is ridiculous. Give me Providence. Providence. South Dakota State, an upset. It's disgusting. You love Ed Cooley. LSU versus Iowa State. Iowa State. Sean? Uh, LSU. Yeah. Uh, I am also on LSU. 
Wisconsin Colgate. Wisconsin survives. Colgate with the upset. Yeah, fuck it. Wisconsin. I'm gonna put Colgate going. There. Wisconsin survives. Uh, SC versus Miami. Give me USC. Yes. Sean. Uh, Miami. Sean's got Miami. Auburn, Jacksonville State. We both like, Auburn. We all like Auburn. All right, Kansas versus San Diego State. Is this one Bill Self does it? I got Kansas winning. I got Kansas. Yeah. Our gal shocked the world, and Bill Self chokes on his own again. Sorry, there were some children walking by out there. <laughs> San Diego State with the upset. Come on, you got to dispose of Bill Self in fun ways. Richmond, Providence. What a game we have uh, here. Providence, Iowa, gets the South win. Dakota State. <laughs> Iowa gets the win. You're at, you have Iowa. Sean and I have Providence advancing here. LSU versus Colgate for me. LSU. You have Iowa State versus Wisconsin. And I'm going to go Wisconsin to get it done there. Give me Colgate to advance to the Sweet 16. Wow. I got weird. I love that. I mean, the team's hot, Colby. The team is hot. Finally, USC versus Auburn. Dangerous game. Dangerous game for the Tigers. They better hope Miami wins because USC is going to give them a game. If so, uh, I'm going to take Auburn. Take yeah, Auburn. I'll take Auburn. Yeah. Give me USC. I'm with you. I think uh, I think that's a one like a bad one matchup. Game, yeah. Bad matchup for Auburn there. Maybe they get hot, but I I, I don't mind Andy Inville and the the Trojans again. Pat. The bigger question is if US, USC could beat Miami. I think you maybe you're right. All right, San Diego State versus Providence for me. You guys have Kansas versus Providence or Providence Kansas. gets the win. Let's Providence go. gets the Kansas win for against me too. Iowa. Iowa upsets the Jayhawks. Ugh, you have Iowa this far? That's gross. Colorado versus or I'm sorry, Colgate versus USC for me. Uh, I don't know what you guys have at this point, but uh, I'm just going to keep this train rolling. Give me the shocker, USC, into the Elite Eight. I got Auburn Providence with Providence winning and going to the Final Four. Wisconsin, Auburn. I got Wisconsin pulling off that upset. All right, I also have Providence going to the Final Four. I have Zags, UCLA on one side. I have Arizona Providence on the other. I got Iowa going to the Final Four, and so that puts us at pretty much the, almost the same Final Four with the Similar. exception of you Providence got, and Iowa. I got Texas Tech, UCLA, Villanova, and Providence. Nope. UCLA versus Villanova in the final. UCLA wins 70 to 68. Let's go. I love your prediction. I've been saying it all year. I'm definitely going to make it my official bracket prediction. UCLA takes down Providence 72 oh, 65. Nice. Mm. Uh,. Student beats teacher. Ooh. Arizona beats Gonzaga in the national championship. Uh, you know, I love the Arizona pick. Look at you picking a one looks seed like, over a one uh, seed. Kramer looks like uh, first uh, first half under is going to RIP. It's the dead? graveyard. Well, you know what happens when you lose the first one? Yeah. You're due for the next You're 35. You're about to get hot. Don't let the dogs get hot. Hey, make sure you download the SGPN app. Get in your uh, free picks for the D-Gen Dance. Your chance to win a share of $3,000 in prizes. 2500 to first, 500 to second place. Let's close things out with a lock, 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 and dog. Do Fair. I go first? Yes. Uh, lock number one, give me USC. Uh, I, I like this matchup for them. Uh, lock number two, give me Davidson. I just think the wrong team is favored here. And lock number three, give me Chattanooga. Love this team. Love catching all those points. And for the money line, give me Colgate plus 240 over Wisconsin. When's Colgate the last time they lost, the Colby? Money line. A long, long time long, ago. Long 15, time what, ago. 15 straight wins? I like teams that are hot, Colby. Yeah, I like, I like Colgate on the money line. I like Chattanooga on the money line. I'm going to go big, though. Go big or go home. Yale shocks the world. Yeah, nice. And gets the money line win. I'm going to, as soon as this ends, going to walk over. $25 free bet, right? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Eight to one. Let's go. All day, Yale on the money line for my locks. Loyola. I mean, come on. Ramble on, baby. Loyola. Uh, you know, they got the mojo. They got some uh, really good guard play. For some of uh, my other locks. Uh, Villanova minus 15. I like it. I'll go. Um, I'm going to go UAB plus eight and then round it out. Michigan state minus one. Mm. Uh, Ooh, I like that. A lock fight. We are going to lock up. Join me Colby. Uh, well, 
Yeah. Actually, the first one I'll lock up will be Auburn minus 16 against mm. Jacksonville State. They don't belong. Get them out of here. Uh, other lock, we're going to go UAB plus eight. I like that one. Okay. And and then the last lock will be, let's go Villanova laying the 15 against Nova. I mean, <laughs> against uh, Delaware. Oh, um, you it's going to happen, buddy. And the dog is the mocks of Chattanooga. Yeah. Chattanooga on Love the it. money line. Can we real quick before we get out of here, can we discuss uh, a round robining strategy that involves Colgate Chattanooga and Yale on the money line, Sean? What do you think about that? Ooh, so sorry. Uh, <laughs> let me write this down. We like Colgate, Colgate, Yale, Yale, Chattanooga, Chat Chattanooga, money line round Robin, two teams, two teamers only. Or do we include what, the three teamers? Uh, yeah, you okay. got to include the three, because that. Oh my God, that that is just a. The database is calculating as we speak. Do, 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 I, do, I, do. I, look, I don't have Yale winning. I don't have Colgate winning, so uh, I can't. Oh, so you're not you're not stamping this one. Like no. it even more. <laughs> oh man, what a uh, what an awesome uh, week. By the way, Sean, here. sorry. Since we've started recording, the Yale money line has moved up to eight nine to one. That's that. Uh, oh, they're they're worried, Ryan. I'm going to take down win bet one way or another. Thank you guys for tuning in to the sports gambling podcast. Make sure you uh, toss a nice radiant review and merch madness, giving away a hoodie every day of March madness, sports gambling podcast.com slash merch madness, M E R C H madness, all lowercase, get your order, or, you know, get your reviews in there for your, uh, for your chance to win a free hoodie, the DJ dance. I'll see you on the dance floor, Sean. I'll see you on the dance floor. $3,000 up for grabs. Sean, and real quick, that parlay, just got, I got it in the win bet calculator right now. Uh, you wouldn't believe it, Sean. $100 pays $12,140. Wait, what? Our three-teamer. $100 that- pay, pay, pays $12,140 for a $100 bet. Really? <laughs> Place your bets, please. Wow. So much action. We, we should probably make sure we get this one in, right? Yes. Uh, get that in as we speak, Ryan. Wow, man. My head is swimming. It is. Uh, it's just so awesome. And uh, shout out to the uh, YouTube channel. We're going to be going live all week here. YouTube.com slash sports gambling podcast. We got a bunch of fun shows coming up. Obviously, as the games happen, uh, we will be picking the rest of the uh rest of the slate Saturday and Sunday. We pick all the games all against the spread and uh, download the SGPN app. You can get all the free picks pages there. Uh, shout out to uh, all our guests on the show today, AKA both guests, Jay Billis and Matt Lindman. Uh, give them a follow at uh, Lindy train L I N D E train on Twitter at Jay Billis. Give Colby Dan a follow on Twitter at the Colby D Make sure you check us out on Twitter at gambling podcast. I'm trying to delay the time because there's 36 seconds left. The first half under is now sitting at 60 points. I got it at 63 Kramer. What did you get it up? I wasn't going to bring it up, but since you brought it up, yeah, I I think it's, I don't have it in my pocket, but I want to say it's 63 as well. Yeah. And we're watching this as it's, (laughs) are we going to sweat this this live? Yeah. Why not? Right. I, well, I think they're going to hold for one more shot. So, okay. They're going to hold for one more shot. Feeling pretty good. Don't want to go out with a push. All right. We got a foul. Not like only, only four seconds went off the clock. So, okay. But the, uh, uh, are they going on? Can you, can you pull it up live, Ryan? I'm trying to Just right give now. us a little play by play. <laughs> this is I, I'm seeing the chat audio. light up. Uh, did, did we, I'm seeing, are people saying yes, we might've won? I think, I mean, I see some reaction. Chris Canfield saying, yes, L F G is it official Ryan? I don't want to celebrate until, until it all ticks zero. I I do not see an update yet in in the app I'm looking at. Well, anyone live in the YouTube chat, please confirm that we have (laughs) one. Chris Canfield saying, not yet. We are close. Oh God. (laughs) This is the, this is the most fun way to sweat out a bet. (laughs) Ryan, it's on true TV. If you could pull that up. Shout out to if you're still listening to the show <laughs> now, you are a uh, you are a real one indeed. Uh, 
Oh yep. my God, nothing's working. <laughs> He's. I'm just respond. I'm just reading uh, Chris's live YouTube chats. Come on, we are close. Come on. All right, I, I'm pulling it up right now. Make sure you subscribe to the College Basketball Experience, Colby. What do you got coming up uh, for? The listeners on the college basketball pod. Oh, wait. Well, we got Patty C and C Nick coming on. We will be going through every single tournament game. We know we did that on Sunday, but those reactions and also. We're going to do you, it again. We got you covered for the NIT. The CBI. CBI the, the basketball classic, was it called? Kramer? The basketball classic. Yes, we got you covered. Get the SGPN app, too. You'll get all of our picks. I got some. We got some wagers going on. We got the UTEP Miners later tonight getting it done in the NIT. Hell, yeah. Or the C- what, CIT, CBI, whatever. CTI, <laughs> UIT. <laughs> All right. This is going to be gross. Hits the second. Please miss. All right. So maybe we won't end up getting it. Uh, either way, we'll sweat this offline. Thank you, everyone, for uh, tuning in to the Sports Gambling Podcast. And for the Sports Gambling Podcast, I'm Sean, stacking the money green, and he is Ryan. 15, 14, 13, 12, 9, 11, 10, wait, I'm going backwards. Nine, eight, seven, six. Oh, they just have to miss one shot. It's a turnover. No, fast break. No, he missed. He missed. 62. Let's go, baby. 62. Let's go. Yes. It was worth it. There we go. Cash the first half of the unders. One down, 35 to go. Let's go, baby. (laughs) For the Sports Gambling Podcast, I'm Sean, second the money green, and he is Ryan. Oh, that was amazing. Kramer, let it ride.